it is very important for people to have a place that they can get outside, they can recreate, um, you know, whether it's being with their friends, their significant other, whether it's for their personal health, you know, walking, running, uh, doing something, or just kind of getting out in a quiet place where nobody else is. Um, Olmsted emphasized essentially that stressed out urbanites need a place like that. Pretty much when something's going on in the community, Betty and I have an opportunity to be involved and very few of the opportunities are truly transformational the way this one is. This is for the centuries, it's for our children and their children and their children's grandchildren. One of the things that's so exciting to me is that we in many ways are setting the pace for the country when it comes to seeing how an urban edge can be developed that's both sustainable and connected to the city at the same time. So there'll be all types of new concepts and living and shopping that are gonna take place around the entire 21st century parks. This is a magical time in Louisville, not only for our project, but Waterfront and everything else, that these projects are happening. And in the face of this recession, when things are hard and things are tough, um, and a lot of cities and communities are scaling back, we actually are jumping forward. We've met these unbelievably interesting people that we would not otherwise have known. So while some people don't like fundraising, when you have a wonderful project like this, it sort of sells itself. My family and I moved back to Louisville about 20 odd years ago, and uh, we were impressed with Cherokee Park and Seneca Park, and Louisville's Waterfront Park was just getting started. And to see that there's a vision for the next hundred years uh, is exciting, that our the kids of our kids of our kids uh, might have a place to go. And I'd be remiss without saying, uh, if you've never been under the pressure of Dan and uh, David Jones when they ask you for money, uh, there's only one obvious answer, and that is yes and how much. And I was particularly um, impressed how they ask the neighbors and the community, what do you want at the park? And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, it's not our money and they're asking us for feedback. I think a lot of people who've been involved in the steering committee have enjoyed is you have a lot of people who um, typically always get engaged in things, but then there've just been a, a group who normally um, just aren't there and they're suddenly involved and so it's been something that's been very inclusive I think really not only for the community but for the region as a whole and it's really neat the way it's come together that way and it's a model for getting things done right now because the government can't get everything done the private sector can't get everything done but when we work together we can get anything done Out of the tens of millions of dollars that I've given the community and Papa John's has given the community, this is our second biggest donation. And we think it is that important to the future of this community and uh, the future of my kids and grandkids. Uh, I grew up eight miles down the road. Uh, this is my past, this is my present, this is our future. One of the things that you know we're very, very proud of is our donation to the parks. And uh, we have this history uh, in our organization and we put uh, big checks up and down the wall of all the organizations that we give to. And uh, far and away, uh, that big check on the wall that's gained the most excitement, uh, at least in my memory, is that check to the parklands. But every time you walk up to somebody, they go, can you believe how beautiful this is? Oh my gosh, isn't this spectacular? What people say to me about the Parklands is, have you seen? You know, that's how they always start off the sentence. And because it's moved so fast, you know, most people aren't used to projects of this scale developing as quickly and professionally as they have. I had yellow tomatoes and just two plants. You believe me, it grow more than you can eat. People come around, I always give them tomato pepper or something, it, it didn't matter. I plant things just to see them grow. I've brought twice now out of town guests to the to the playground and spray ground area because you can you don't have to spend any money. You go and you bring a picnic and you sit under there and the kids can get really hot and worked up in the playground area and then run through the spray ground and that's definitely their favorite thing to do. Well do the water park or the water things, 
and walk probably as long as you want. And because it's really big. And bike around. When I go to the creek at the park, it's so cool because we get to walk down the stream and find a bunch of fossils and see what they are and act like there's something awesome like a dinosaur bone or like a butterfly got trapped in it. The neatest reaction we're seeing though are the small ones that aren't planned and they aren't scheduled. It's when you have a group of elementary age kids you're taking on a tour and they run into a, an older gentleman fishing who then talks to them about what they're fishing. It's those magic little community moments where people come together that otherwise would not have come together had it not been for the park. The number one thing that we want is that these parks be well used and well loved. Uh, we think everything else flows from that. Um, if people come out and use the parks um, and, and get to love them, uh, they're going to support us. Um, we are a donor supported organization. We don't get any tax revenue from the city to operate these. One of our pledges is that we would raise those funds. But the way to do that is to create alumni. You know, the reason that colleges and universities are so effective at, at raising money is that people go there, they appreciate what they got from that, and at some point in their life they want to give back. The proximity to downtown is what makes part of the magic comes alive, come alive at the Parklands of Floyd's Fork. So having the choice to live on the urban edge in a sustainable, really super green environment with this world-class park and be able to come downtown in 20 minutes is really unique in American cities. And with the broader community, we are at a very special moment. Very, very few communities get the chance to have this green infrastructure in place and then determine how they want to shape the community around it. And that's going to be a long-term discussion for this community. Is 50 years now, what do we want to be like? Louisville's doing something that ought to be done everywhere. As populations grow, land should be set aside of the edge of the city while it's still affordable and then turned into parkland as conditions allow. Thanks to Steve Henry, we got a jump on that in Louisville. But thanks to Dan and his wonderful team at 21st Century Parks, they're building something that's going to be the envy of the world. And a lot of people have given to this project for a lot of different reasons. But in the end, it's going to make our community an even greater place. So for everybody that stepped up, I say thank you for making this a great park. This is one of these gifts that's going to keep giving for a long time.